Uh, first, just like to tell you, it's a real honor to be here, and thank you for the Blue Waters team and everyone to have invited me. And it was a real um, privilege to be exposed to a resources, resource of such a scale, um, such as Blue Waters, and to be able to work with them. To add the opportunity to work with a professional team, such as the guys from Blue Waters, um, it, was, uh, yeah, it was a humble experience. And the things that, we learned, that I learned from the guys, I'm definitely taking it over to the groups that I'm working with at, um, in South Africa. Okay, so what I'm going to share with you today is um, how Blue Waters helped us to complete a significant part of uh, the Atri Africa genotype chip design that we're doing. Um, I'll start off by giving you um, background on what the Atri Africa project is, what the genotype chip is, um, why uh, Atri uh, African chip are needed, and then I'll go into the details of where Blue Waters fit into the analysis and data transfers. Okay, just the overview. So the Human Heredity and Health in Africa Initiative, H2 Africa, is an NIH-funded and Wellcome Trust-funded project. Um, the aim of the project is to address um, genetic factors that affect diseases in African populations. Um, the studies that we are looking at is rheumatic um, heart disease, cardiometabolic um, disorders, schizophrenia, um, sleeping sickness, um, kidney disease, tuberculosis, and respiratory diseases in children. Now, the project is divided into collaborative projects, um, ethnical research projects, um, biomedical research projects, bioreprocities, and a bioinformatics network. Um, the bioinformatics network is named HRA Bionet, and it's a pan-African bioinformatics network that has, we have 30 nodes in 15 African countries. Um, I'm part of the, a node in South Africa, and I'm a bioinformatician there. Um, then we also have two partner institutions um, in the UK and one in the USA. And HPC Bio at the University of Illinois is one of the partners. And Prof. Victor Jungenil has been a key person and making it possible for us to do analysis on blue waters. Um, the aim of, the, of Bionet is to provide support for the African projects, for, for the HD Africa project, um, and researchers um, whilst do building bioinformatics capacity in Africa. Our responsibility is to store h Africa data, um, to facilitate submission f to the European Genome Archive once we um, are ready, and also to do training and provide um, skill transfers in bioinformatics, and also build computing infrastructure. So the h Africa project will generate around 70,000 of DNA samples. And those samples, for each of them, they would be a subset of harmonized phenotypes. And um, they would represent a broad spectrum of different ethno-linguistic, ethno environmental, um, genetic, and cultural backgrounds, and different disease cases. And the data would be all genomic, whether it's genotype array data, um, full genome exome data, or microbiome data. However, 55,000 of those samples would be genotyped, and the plan is to do that on the Edge to Africa chip. So, what is a genotype array? Um, an array consists pro uh, um, contains probes that detect specific markers in a genome. Um, the probes are mainly selected based on common variants and disease-causing variants in a population. It's ideal for processing thousands of samples um, quickly and cost-effectively to identify mutations and structural variants. And it's also used in genome-wide associ association studies to determine if a, if a SNP is associated um, with a trait or disease. And it's also being used in whole genome sequencing com in combination with whole, whole genome sequencing panels um, to impute missing genotypes in a genotype array. Regarding cost, um, for the Illumina Omni 2.5 million chip, you would pay, pay less than $100 compared to whole genome sequencing done on an Illumina X10. Um, that would be just over $1,000. Okay, so why a customized African genome chip? Well, the African genome is very diverse, and the haplotype blocks in the genome is much less than, uh, much more than you would get in, in the European or Caucasian population. This means that SNPs that designed for European populations wouldn't be taggable 
might not be taggable when in the African population. A common variant in the, Af in the European population might also be not be representative at such a frequency in the, in the African population. And this would mean that kind of, if you have that SNP on your strip, um, it wouldn't be that informative. Then regarding studies in the African Genome Variation Project, um, there was a, a comparison done on whole genome sequencing of three populations. And they found that there were a large number of novel sequences within, within the whole set, but also there were a, a large number of novel set uh, sequences across the populations. And that just shows you, even within Africa, populations have a diverse genetic content. Then another study, the 1,000 Genomes Phase 3, has shown that the average number of SNPs that you get in the African genome is more than you would get in a, in a European individual and even more than in a Japanese Chinese individual. So all of these factors and reports kind of confirm that uh, European-driven genotype chip wouldn't be ideal or wouldn't be optimal for the African population. So the H Africa Consortium decided that <laughs> there's a need for an African um, genotype chip designed for the population. And the uh, uh, chip design working group was formed, and they chose a team of two groups, one at Sanger and one at h 2 Abina to drive the analysis and design of the project. And the idea was that, was that both of the, 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 the groups would share the analysis. So the, the data that we're using um, in designing this chip um, it comes from all genome sequencing data and from different resources. Um, we've got samples from the Genome Diversity and Analysis Project, um, sequences from the UNO, uh, Ugandan 2000 Genome Project, the African Genome Variation Project, 1000 Genomes, Troponogen, South African Union, Human Genome Project, and then a specific set, the Baylor set. This set was chosen by Asia Africa. Um, it's also whole genome sequencing, but it was chosen to represent those sequences or populations that's not been presented by the other populations in the data set. Okay, so this is just a schematic of the workflow um, of how to finally get the SNPs that we're gonna put on the chip to be manufactured. So we start off with whole genome data, and then eventually we just provide a tag SNP list. Um, so the raw, de raw data uh, are being aligned to the human genome reference. We're doing some QC, then we do calling on the on sample level, then we do joint calling across data sets or within a data set, then we refine um, the likelihood scores um, of the specific data set, the calling scores, and we determine haplotype blocks, and then we use cross imputation to merge data sets, and then we go into the, the the process where we select chips and validate them. And this is a iterative process. We work also work with the manufacturers, manufacturers to decide if that chip can actually, or that SNP can actually go onto the chip. Um, once we have a confidence tag slip list, we'll provide the final list and it will go into uh, manufacturing. Okay, so the component that um, we, or, or the workflow that we um, implemented on Blue Waters was the variant calling part. Um, so this is just a zoomed in version of the, re the um, schematic I showed previously. And what happens is you take sequence data that comes from the sequencer, which is basically just a, a, f a, a text file containing sequence data and raw quality data um, for a cos corresponding sequence. Um, then we align it to a specific human genome reference. We do some QC. Um, then we re do some realignment around indels. We recalibrate the um, base quality scores to get a, a better a, a representation of the alignment. And then we finally do a step where we check for over-representation of heterozygosity in a sample. If it's above a certain threshold, we discard the sample. And then we do um, calling on sample level. So you start off with sequence data, then, then you generate the alignment. Um, which is just a map of, of reads against a, uh, a known reference. And then finally, you get a file that contains entries for SNPs, a genotype, and some metadata information, such as the quality scores of the call or the depth of the calling region. Um, regarding data size, um, for a 33 times genome, you would um, 
expect to, get, to have a sequence data file of around 100 gig. Um, the final alignment would be around 150 gig. And then uh, final VCF would be less than 5 gigs. Um, but you also would have um, some intermediate files, and that would be around 10 times your original input size. So all in all, you would need at least a terabyte of space per sample. OK, so just more detail on the data sets. So as I said, there was a specific um, set selected to represent the African population that wasn't in the other sets. Um, and most of them were from Western Africa. And, and then there was two from Southern Africa, Zambia, and Botswana. Um, we did the sequencing at the Baylor College of Medicine at 33 times coverage um, on the ISEC X10. Um, that gives you 150 base pair reads. Um, the sequencing was done in batches, um, so we also did the transfers and processing in batches. Okay, so why did we need process? Why were processing at Blue Waters required? Um, at the point when we wanted to do the analysis or the processing of the uh, of the calling part, our local facility just didn't have enough resources. Um, in terms of processing, that would have taken months. In terms of storage, they weren't enough to accommodate all of the samples. Um, and then another issue was transfer issues. We weren't able to establish a good transfer connection between Blue Waters and um, Blue Waters between Baylor and our local facility to assure um, reasonable speeds of transfer, because that would have put a bottleneck on the, on the whole um, processing pipeline as well. So we reached out to our HPC bio team, which is also part of the HUA Binet, and Pro Victor Jong O'Neill suggested that we put in an application um, for resources at Blue Waters. Not only because there is more than enough um, resources available, it is because transfer issues would probably be less um, getting the data from Baylor College of Medicine Blue Waters, as well as the team already has a variant calling pipeline um, developed on Blue Waters, which is proved and tested. Um, and so, um, Ludo Meinzer and Victor put in an application, and they requested resources based on their previous experience on working with these sample sets and data sizes. Um, and finally, we were awarded a strategic um, allocation for the project, and that was from last year, May to December. Um, initially, we were assigned the 5,000 5, um, node hours. Eventually, it was um, upgraded to 2,500. Initially, we had 500 terabytes on space and terabytes of space on scratch. Later, it was increased to 650, and we had an overall of one petabyte of near line storage available. So, how was the jobs package on Blue Waters? Um, so we basically had to make some small, mo oh, reasonable modifications to the current pipeline on um, Blue Waters. Um, and the current pipeline was just a bunch of shell scripts stitched together that generates, um, that triggers jobs and packages jobs. And jobs um, on each step were packaged using the Anisimov launcher on sample or chromosome level, um, depending on the possibilities of how the tool can operate. Um, so some of the changes that we made to the existing pipeline or adapted is we added a parser, a parser to properly match sequence data and the blue water uh, the Baylor metadata so that we can start processing. We added some extra QC checks. We replaced the step um, that we uh, that they ca that they had for doing um, flagging duplicates with uh, another another tool. And we also replaced the tool that's act that, that did the variant calling with a more recent version of the tool. Um, okay. So I was data transferred to Blue Waters. Um, Jim Glasgow and Paul Weffel, together with Luda, helped us um, and worked with the Baylor uh, networking team to set up a Globus endpoint and get the transfer rates up to acceptable speed. Um, once that was settled, um, it was up to us to coordinate transfers and track data with the Baylor team. And Baylor also generated um, alignments and per sample VCFs. And at the point, like I said before, the transfers between South Africa and um, Baylor was a bit, wasn't up to speed. So we arranged that we can also transfer that large set 
to Blue Waters on the, um, on the agreement that it would be moved off as soon as we sort out the transfer, rate, the transfer issues to South Africa. Okay. So this is just the run um, statistics um, for all of the batches. The table um, present, e each entry in the table present the batch. Um, when, when did we, whoop, whoop, sorry. Okay, each entry represents the batch when we started processing, um, and when it was completed, and the disk usage that batch took. Um, so overall, we used 516 terabytes for processing, and then it took around 52 days. And what you always also no will notice, we only started um, running the jobs in October, and we got the, uh, the okay, we got the location in May. Um, the reason was there was some hiccups. Um, um, first, we had to build the workflow or d adapt it. Um, we also, there was a delay in, um, uh, uh, in reagents, so that took longer to start the sequencing, as well as um, Baylor changed the way that they did sequencing. Initially, um, the plan was to do it on lane level, and then they moved on to sample level, and that changed our whole workflow. So overall, we used 212,000 node hours. Um, if we didn't add discounts, it would have been over 600,000 hours. Um, and at the end of um, December, we were able to transfer all of the VCF files, the GVC files that we re required to do the um, joint calling over the Baylor set to, to, um, to us. And we were able to do the joint calling earlier this year. Okay, so this is just uh, 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 some statistics on the SNPs. Um, counts. Each entry is, uh, 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 is per chromosome. It shows you um, the number of novel sites, the number of no known sites, and the total number of sites. And here at the bottom, you have the, the, the total. So in overall, there was a 33 million SNPs, um, and 2.7 million of those are unique in the Baylor set. OK, so where are we now? Um, so all the joint calling we've done. Um, we're currently busy with phasing and building the haplotype blocks on each data set. Once we're done with that, we'll start with the cross imputation, then go into the tag selection. Now, data transfers were a challenge. And initially, it was just getting the data from, from Baylor College of Medicine to Blue Waters, but that issue was solved reasonably soon. But the date, getting data from Blue Waters to South Africa was a big issue. Eventually, we were able to get some reasonable speeds and reliable transfers in February, but we foresee that we won't be able to transfer the data before our allocation expired on Scratch. So um, we put in another application um, for a data management plan to extend our storage. Um, and what was that entailed is that we had to move our data to Nearline, um, all the data. But currently, um, so I'm only transferring the last 1.5 terabytes um, and it's running at around uh, 25 um, megabits per second so hopefully it's gonna be done bef at the end of July um, and this is just a, sh a map showing how the transfers app where the transfers had to go and this data set sizes this is not the representative um, of the network itself the data would probably be, be sent to, to the UK and then around the western part of Africa on the wax cable. Um, but from, Blue from Baylor to Blue Waters, we had to transfer a total of 90 terabyte, terabyte. And then from Blue Waters to South Africa, we had to transfer 150, 40 terabytes uh, because that included the data that we also processed on Blue Waters. Um, this is just some statistics on the transfer itself. Um, now, the, on the left-hand side, we've got the ba Blue Waters, uh, the Baylor to Blue Water transfers, and here the Blue Waters to Bits transfers. And the y-axis here represents the gigabytes of transfer, and the the x-axis just points to um, each box plot pre presents a, a transfer. Um, so, what and at the bottom, you've got a representation of the effective speech for each box plot at the top. So, uh, this was just a plot on the raw data and on the, the y-axis here, it's a 0 to 15 terabytes. 
and here it's be between 0 and 2.5, 2,500 megabits per second. And both of these axes are the same. So you can definitely see that the international transfers are much less. Um, and this is just also just a representation of that previous, um, but in a box plot. So on average, we had a just over 700 megabits per second transfer between the beta for the over the 90 terabyte total transfer. And on over the 150 terabyte transfer to South Africa, we had a just over a 200 megabits per second effective rate. Okay, so I just want to say thank you to all the, the team at Blue Waters, um, whether they help with um, debugging runs, um, sorting out storage, or helping with the transfers. Um, then the group at HPC Bio, Professor Victor Jung Neil, that's been very supportive for the Asia Africa, Asia Bionet project in the whole. Luda Manza, that Manza, that was the leader for us of leading the project on Blue Water, the very calling project, and Gloria Rendon, that made many of the adaptions to the pipeline. And then the guys from WITS, which is the university on the north of Af South Africa, where I eventually were able to get the data transferred to their team. And then to the Sanger team, um, Mayan Sandu is the leader, the team lead on their side, um, driving the analysis, and Tommy and Martin, um, help me confirm some parameters, uh, parameters so that we can keep the variant calling part homogeneous. And then our group, Nikki Molden, which is my boss and also the team lead for HA Bionet as well as for the chip design. Aiden Manchis, that's the bioinformatician in our group that helped me with um, all the work done in Blue Waters, and Sumer Panji, which is the uh, um, network manager. And also the CHPC guys, which were our local facility. Um, they wouldn't be able to help us with the processing of the Baylor data, but they were very supportive in doing other kind of um, helping out with other processing. And then we have our local network team in South Africa, um, the tertiary network. Um, they've helped also with debugging network issues. And then the Blue would have Baylor College of Medicine, um, Ginger and Jennifer, um, helped in coordinating the transfers from, ba Blue Water, from Baylor to Blue Waters. And Paish Pancho helped setting up the global endpoint at Bayer. Um, thank you.